Um, I know some folks are still um, signing in, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we want to be sensitive to you guys' time and also save a lot of questions, for, I mean, a lot of time for questions and answers at the end. So thank you for joining us um, for this webinar that's Business Trends in the New Normal. Um, we have a great presenter today, Adriana Madrinon, um, who's one of the SBDC consultants. And as you guys know, you know, every, all the businesses are trying to pivot. We're all trying to adjust to the new normal after the pandemic and COVID-19. Um, actually, by, back by popular demand, um, Adriana has like a second webinar. We had one last week that you guys gave us really great feedback on and um, uh, basically discussing kind of business transformation. And this one is focused on business trends in the new normal. Um, as I said, she's gonna have a presentation and then we're going to save time for questions and answers. If you do have questions, please type it in the Q&A section um, the little uh, tab at the bottom. That way we can track um, the questions and we can answer them at the end. Um, and with that, we'll get into it. Um, as I mentioned, um, or as you probably know, um, my name is Brian Van Hook and I'm Regional Director of the Florida Small Business Development Center at FIU. We have a team of uh, 17 business specialists and we focus on growing businesses in Miami-Dade County and also in Monroe County in the Keys. And obviously, um, you know, we have a really great team as I said, we focus on helping you get capital, get loans, um, increase revenue, increase sales, um, hire more people. But we can't do that if you're impacted by a pandemic, if you're impacted by a hurricane, um, by road construction, by business interruptions. So we really do focus on business continuity and business recovery, um, like a lot of other organizations in the community. And um, you can see um, kind of photos of our great team up there. Um, and if you are not in Miami-Dade County or Monroe County, that's okay. Um, we have an SBDC near you, so you can just reach out to us and um, we'll get you connected to your local SBDC. And um, basically we have different services. We focus on business planning, business strategy, uh, marketing, international trade, government contracting, um, other areas such as that. And as I said, it's focused on business growth. Um, our website is sbdc.fiu.edu. And you can also contact us at 305-779-9230. Um, we receive federal funding and also state funding. Um, so this service is offered at no cost to you. Um, but we have to pay really great consultants like Adriana, so I don't say it's free, because um, we have to pay them to spend time to work with you. And um, with that, I'm just gonna turn it over to Adriana and she can kind of get into her presentation. So thanks for you guys for attending and then um, we're happy to help you out and get you this information. Thank you, Brian. It's always great to be here to be giving more information to all the, the small and medium business in uh, Florida. I'm very happy to be sharing a second presentation. Um, for those that missed the one last week, we were really focused, we, our focus was in, it was called the business reinvention kit. It was some steps that I recommend you take. If you miss that presentation, at the end of this presentation, there is a QR code where you can get a link to that video. I have also created this presentation in a way that we will send the slides so you can click on the links and you can see all the examples that I'm sharing with you today about trends. So probably when we talk about trends and when you look at your business, um, you feel like the guy in the picture, where to go uh, and uh, where really uh, things are changing and things are changing for the long run and it's difficult to know where to take our business. I shared this slide, this slide with you last week. Um, Mackenzie, that is a really good source right now um, is uh, saying that we need to go, we went through the resolve part, that was the, immediately when we went into the lockdown, the resilience where we kind of um, took things as they came, now we are returning, but then we need to reimagine our business in the next normal. So what is changing, what has changed, and what is gonna change? And then we need to reform, um, and definitely we will be something different. I'm also sharing it, this is like, so everybody's in the same page. Um, for those that didn't know, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, as I said, the first one was about um, the steam 
uh, machine. The next one was about electricity and the motor as we know it today. The third one was about internet, cell phone data, which is ending this year. But within the third industrial revolution is the fourth industrial revolution that is about artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, autonomous cars, so many other technologies that are changing. So what is happening is, is whenever these changes come, and, and if you look in the history, it takes years for industrial revolutions to change, but it completely changed the way things are done. There is a graph of this type that it really goes down, we touch the bottom, that is when a lot of disruption is happening and we pick up again. What COVID-19 is doing is accelerating this graph. So we are moving faster to the rebuilding phase. So we are probably in the exploration now, but we will go into the rebuilding phase. But what is important to know is things will be changing even within that rebuilding phase. Probably if in six months, I'll talk to you about trends. We may even see things or trends that we started to spot, but in a completely different shade. So things will be changing. And when change comes and, and COVID-19 came as a trigger, it changed customer needs and therefore our expectations. And then um, that is the perfect time to reinvent. And reinvention come either in new vision of your business, new business model, product services, experiences, uh, experiences and campaigns. One person that I think I, I of course I'm a strategist and therefore I like to follow um, people that are thinking about the future. Uh, one strategy that I like to follow is Simon Sinek. And he said this, that I, I believe in this. Um, he said, this is not unprecedented. More sudden? Absolutely. More shocking? Absolutely. But this is not unprecedented in the business world. In fact, at that point, he said, for instance, when internet came, a lot of companies were in shock. If you think when Amazon really went bigger, a lot of stores were in shock. So there are a lot of changes across history. Even when we got the electric light, it took 10 years to start using the electric light because it was really impacting the gas system. That was the way we got energy. And then he said, so for us to say how we will do what we were doing, but rather how we will do what we are doing in a different world and the word is different. So it's changing and it's gonna change and it's gonna be different. I'm sure many of us, there are a lot of things that we love in maybe not things that we are not happy, but many things that we like. And there are many of you really in the survival mode, probably, but all others in which their business is still open, but it's changing. So what COVID-19 uh, brought is, three, a uh, five human implications. And that's what drives the trends and the change. The first one is confidence. The next one is a completely new virtual world that has been happening for the last 25 years, but it has accelerated. The high care about health and well-being to the point that every single business is in the health and well-being business now. The cocooning, um, because we definitely want to stay in our homes and a new leadership. So we will go to see how these implications created, had um, this uh, have implication and then affect our trends. Okay, let's talk about confidence first. There's a high cost of confidence right now. So the impact is people are postponing purchase decisions. There is hyper information that really is confusing us. Um, we see all type of comments and in all sort of ways. Definitely we value the familiar, we feel safe. And because we feel safe and we are in this survival mode, the individualism comes in a, into a big, big place. So let's see some examples that, of trends that are um, impacting in that impact of confidence. We are at home, we are at home with our kids and we fear that our kids are not learning enough. And, uh, uh, and that's uh, changing the way we see things. So um, 
Whirlpool really understood that need and created, if you look into Instagram and all the links, all the areas that I have in red, once you receive the presentation, you can go deeper in those examples of the trends. So yes, we lost our confidence on the education of the kids. Whirlpool really understood that and it's created a campaign called the Chore Club, where in every single, more, almost every day in Instagram, they teach kids how to do a different chore. So yes, probably they are not selling a lot of washing and dryer machines right now, even though one of, we will see later, one of the areas we're investing is in our homes. Um, but it, parents are busy and they're teaching kids how to do the chores and by doing the chores, how to learn math or different skills. So it's a very interesting way how uh, Whirlpool is raising confidence. Another example that I wanted to talk about confidence, um, these examples are uh, just to give you ideas. It's a company running the Brussels public bus system that began using one of the buses to deliver personal voice messages via a loudspeaker. So, um, so definitely this is the time that any positive message, any reinforcement we can bring can definitely change the way, um, the situation and put your brand in a new level. Mexico, like many other countries in Latin America, are using radio, are using radio to start collaborating and connect in different ways. In fact, in third world countries, radio has become the way to educate kids uh, at, um, at school. So the interesting thing is here we even have podcasts. So any of you that is in the, maybe in the education for young kids, there are many ways on, um, that you can do it with the new media. And, and I encourage you to explore all of that. So what could be the strategies to bring confidence? The first thing you have to do is definitely you need to understand your customer needs. So what are those customer needs? How are they feeling? Is the same client, but with completely different needs. That's something that we talked last week. Um, you then analyze how could your products and, or service bring confidence. Um, if you think the new life of families, the whole family is in the same house, um, parents are working, there is no time, for instance, for cleaning or cooking. Um, how can you help that? How can you reassure that whenever you deliver your product or service is, is very clean and safe? The next is what impact in the structure process partnership of price you have to do to, to attend those new needs. Definitely communicate how you care. And, and if you look on, I've, been, I've seen really amazing ads on TV, how companies have shift, shift with that, that um, we that wanna give confidence and, and we care about you. And then build trust. This is a time to rebuild the trust with the relationship. Um, we all have our previous clients, probably we'll have new clients, but this is the time to build that strong relationship. My company is here for you or for your company. Uh, you can count on us. So that's an important um, trend and strategy. The second strategy, uh, trend that we are seeing is that the new experience is, that it, is the virtual experience. I've been reading about the fourth industrial revolution for at least four years now. Um, and, um, and they say that our digital, physical, and uh, virtual world, uh, sorry, digital, physical, and uh, biological world were gonna merge. And the biggest change of the fourth industrial revolution was gonna be the way we um, connect and communicate with people. And it was for me difficult to understand, but now I really see it. We are connecting and communicating in, in completely different ways. It has, um, it has a feeling that it has changed some, if I've closed some doors, but it had also opened amazing word, uh, doors that we are connecting even with people that we didn't talk for a while or um, um, even being able to expose our business to a new way. And I want you to think 
that even though our focus right now because of COVID-19 is a lot of local, there is a lot of opportunities for many of you to be more, um, more international even. And I have here three very interesting examples that we will see in a minute. So one, some of the impacts is we are moving from the physical to the virtual world. Definitely broad, broadband and 5G is gonna be, are, are really now more needed than ever and, and part of us because we, we are, the consumption of this virtual world is getting higher and higher every day. Um, adaptability definitely will be the game for success. And as I said, this is going to be changing every moment and it will continue for, the, for a, some years to come. And definitely new social ties. We are connecting with people we never imagined. I, to my surprise, I have connected with a very interesting professionals in the last month. Just by presentations I have done, I have received calls from many places. Um, and I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And they have also shown me that I can also call people that I respect and admire and connect with them too. So here are amazing examples that we never thought. So if you are in the tourism world, this is a very interesting example. Faroe Island creating with the tourism board a virtual travel experience. So once you come to be a visitor, they give you the, con the control of the local, uh, there's some, somebody with the mountain camera, but for a minute you have control to see what you wanna see. So they are doing a lot of tourism um, from, you can be wherever in the world, but you can visit the Faroe Islands. I think this is an amazing example to prove that we don't need to take a plane to really enjoy tourism around the world. I really believe there is a huge market right now for the elderly population that are very young, that were really, they're still very young, that were really investing in traveling and we can bring it to them. Uh, we need more entertainment at home and we need entertainment that is worth watching. So this is an amazing example. There is the link, please look at it. Another example that I like is an agency called We Are Social that created a snap safe. So when people are, uh, are outside, they can use their Snapchat to really measure um, social distancing. Uh, so it's interesting to, to, to use even the apps that we use right now and, and connect in different ways. So this is an example, how can we use virtual reality to connect in different ways to, with our customers. This was a trend that was coming. For instance, if I were selling an apartment and it's empty, I could use um, virtual reality to show how the furniture would look there. There are amazing apps um, to convert pictures. You can even show if it's not live, but also how a different product looks with different light or with different um, with furniture, without furniture, um, a lot of, uh, you can edit a lot of uh, these to show your product. I, I really encourage you not only to see this example, but to see um, how you can use virtual reality to attract and, and show things to your customers that you need to show probably not personally. This is a trend that is really coming in China. That is the mixture of e-commerce and virtual reality. So Ideal is a Chinese-based brick and mortar jewelry retailer. What they did is in order to sell more, because who's gonna buy jewelry during COVID-19? Um, so they created a, a lower cost uh, type of um, jewelry and they train all their sales reps and work with, um, with um, program, um, company to create this live stream, like, I guess, mini novellas um, to reconnect with people. And, and apparently this is a big trend in China, connecting e-commerce with, um, with virtual reality, with, um, uh, with live streaming, sorry. E-commerce and live streaming. Again, if you click in the link, you will be able to read more about it. 
So the strategies in this world really going virtual, that it was not something that, as I say, something that was coming anyway, is you need to assess which of your company's assets can be activated for virtual usage. Things that maybe we're doing in this physical world, but there are tools that we can change to more virtual. Definitely your channels, that is the way you communicate with your clients, um, you need to look for a strategy and see how can you provide better support online. So everything that is chat, Zoom, or any other tools, think, sub, think about your customer service, but in a virtual world. Create online customer connections because people want that social distancing. And, and I was listening that how in the news we see a lot of people going out, living the normal life, but nobody's telling us that 25% of the population are, um, is, is at home. So, um, so that's what we really need to also consider. 25% of our market, if we're in the business to consumer market, is at home. Um, virtual collaboration. So how can we work together with our clients? If you are a consultant and you're listening to me, there are apps like Neural that you can connect and, and, and discuss projects with clients. Even Zoom is an amazing tool to collaborate. And also rethink the last mile. The last mile is the last mile from the, the, the product of service takes to get to your client. One, the biggest reinvention will come in that last mile. So how can I bring the, the last mile from from the, the delivery of my product of service? How can I implement? If, it's, if I'm delivering food or if I'm delivering, um, I don't know, even a new experience, a, a yoga class, how can del I deliver it to my customer in a better way? The third um, area that is impacting us as a human beings and changing our needs, therefore our expectations, is that every business is a health and well-being business. Um, and it's, it's taking um, in four areas, it's also impacting four areas. Individual commitment. Uh, I think, and that's something that it has really caught my attention is that the new world is forcing us to have this will we don't have the boss anymore that they see us uh, in the desk or that they see our jacket and they, we, they assume we are in the office. It's more about my commitment, my commitment to be healthy, my commitment to be well, my commitment to have my family healthy and in, in good health, my commitment to worry about the health and well-being of my friends. So it's about my decision. It's not anybody's telling me you have to do it. I'm not in a team anymore. Um, it, it's coming from me. Definitely government is, is, is doing a huge investment in health and well-being. Um, it's really needed right now. Definitely we need guidance and there are a lot of trends like, um, they are called like mentor protege. So we are worried about the people we care to the point that in many cases we are becoming the parents of our parents, for instance. Another guidance is how uh, we have now telemedicine, teleconsulting, all these uh, ways to connect and bring us guidance. We wanna be able to be cooking healthy at home. How can you guide me? Then the cleanliness. How do I care that whatever I do on my business is showing that it's in the cleaning list mode? <laughs> So here are some examples. The UK National Health Services partnered with multiple well-being apps. And if in the picture you can see Headspace, that is an app to te that teach you how to meditate. Um, so you can, they could, they, all their medical system could be distressed. So think in your, pr your products or services, how can you partner with other people to offer that well-being? Or maybe you don't have that, but maybe you have a restaurant and you want to bring products that when you bring the food to the houses, you can also sell other products like candles and something else to enrich your experience and bring some well-being. 
Also, um, the well-being is even in art. Uh, it was so, uh, this was a very interesting uh, example for me. Is um, the UN partnered with the World Health Organization to launch the global call out to creatives. It's an open competition for creatives to design work and, and uh, convey essential information about COVID-19. And we need to think that the whole world is in this. And uh, maybe even parts of the world that access to information, reading is not that easy or is not that clear. So how could with art, we could permeate the need of of um, you know the, the care about COVID-19 that we need all of, around the world. So, so this is a proof that there are many channels to, to use uh, for health and care and how even art is involved in health and wellness. Um, everything touchless. Um, one of the biggest trends that we are expecting and if you're listening and if you are in construction or you are a handyman or Everything touchless. Our world and our cities will become touchless. Um, one, this UAE-based um, Ethiar Air, Airways was uh, testing how to do all this contactless um, connection when people come from outside to travelers. So, but think about that. When now we go to a building, I went outside, uh, I had to see a lawyer recently and, uh, and I was laughing with my husband because I was like, okay, who's gonna open the door, you or me? And then the elevator, and who's gonna knock in the door? <laughs> and probably, yes, maybe it's more fear, but the reality is we talk, confidence is gonna be hard for a while. So every touchless, everything will be touchless. The buildings and cities will change drastically. So that's a really big area of, uh, a bit, really big trend. So the strategies here for the health and well business. So understand the customer and your employee concern and manage the situation or eliminate all that that creates concern. Um, systems should be designed for the current needs. So contactless payments and shops. Um, consider uh, what role your product or service can be play in the health and wellness space. What can you offer? Um, there are many uh, essence products uh, that make us feel good. So how that feel good? How what I do as a service, as a product, make me feel good? Even me as a consultant, I really feel my role right now, right now is to give that space, that um, little hope. Because if I bring that hope, I know small business and medium business can get to where they want to be. But if I don't help them see themselves in the future, they won't get there. So, so think even, doesn't matter which business you are, what role in the health and wellness space is your business playing? Also, um, realistically assess how healthy your product or service is. If it's not at all, Maybe you need to change it or you really need to modify it. We know there are now industries that are really, really need working hard how to reinvent or how to offer a different service so they can assure that health and wellness. Explore how your business can, be, uh, can create value around the health and the post-COVID-19 reality. So that health and, and, and wellness is not only now, but let's also think in six months from now how we are gonna offer our services. So it will be also a transition. So we need to understand all those steps. Cuckooing, so we definitely wanna be at home, uh, home sweet home, and we wanna be, most of us, but we also, the situation is forcing us. Because even if we wanna go out and have a nice coffee with a friend, or uh, meet with a, not, our, our client, uh, we have our kids at home, we have our elders at home, and that's completely changing. And, and it's changing completely the ways we see home. So let's see the impact. One thing is the home spending. It has really increased. I was listening to, I think it was Marketplace last week, and painting 
it has increased, I don't remember the exact number, if it was 20 or 25%, it has increased the consumption of painting. So it seems like many of us has been, have been busy painting and fixing our houses. So anything you can offer to improve quality of life inside the house, that's a plus. I always joke, I'm from Colombia, and I always joke and I say that in Colombia, people live in gold cages um, because quality of life is amazing once you cross the door. You have really good quality of life. Uh, outside is not that easy, but inside your home. How can we bring that quality of life? Probably we all now want these beautiful gold cages with all the, what we need, what are the spaces we need, how we need them, um, what are the areas of the house we're using now? Maybe we need more space for our technology and, and, uh, and a smaller living room. So how we are gonna incorporate all of that is, is what is really important. Stay local. Uh, probably the summer is coming and many of you have also thought, what am I gonna do during the summer? Um, definitely stay local is the option. So for all of you in the travel industry, in the, and uh, many industries, how can we bring that experience local? Maybe we are not gonna travel that much. Some of us will have to, but many people will stay local. How do we leverage the stay local? Um, then the intergenerational relationships, we are to really connected to all our generations together, which is bringing amazing spaces. So how can we motivate that in a good way? How can we bring connection, communication, entertainment to all levels, from kids to elders? And, and there are many spaces that once we only think of a new segment, is, is I was talking recently to a company that when you deliver to kids, that's a, probably you can do to deliver to elderly people too. Um, so it's, it's interesting, you need to see all those targets. Then autonomous technologies. Um, believe it or not, one of the areas that we are moving, in fact, the consumption of drones have increased, is how we entertain with other things that maybe allow us to leave our reality outside but also to improve our quality inside. Um, maybe we want technology that help us do the chores so we have more time for work or the family. Um, so many of those technologies. So if you are in that world of think how you can bring better experience within the house. So here are some examples. So Disney and NBC Universal released new movies earlier um, than expected because of the international lockdowns. It was a big discussion between the theaters and Disney and NBC Universal. Some of the theaters decided not to air, to have in theaters, any, theaters any more movies from either Disney or NBC Universal. However, this is my opinion here. I think um, this will be a new trend. Uh, we will enjoy more our backyards. We will see more movies at home, but I think we need to find a way to bring the rest of the experience home. How can we bring the popcorn? How can we bring the nice hot dog? How can uh, we make the whole experience for our family and probably our close friends? Because the reality is we will be initially meeting only with our close relatives and friends. That will feel safer, safer for us. For all of, the, of all those of you that are in restaurants and are listening to me, Instagram, I don't know if you know, but Instagram team up with, uh, us, with food delivery platform, Chow Now. Chow Now will help you how to put all, the, all your restaurant menu in a way that you can connect with your clients and, and sell with your clients. There are many other ways to do it, but I thought this was a very interesting way that you know that Instagram is really aware that your restaurant needs now to sell um, and bring a good experience to your clients. So that's why I put in this presentation all the links so you can go and read more and find more. Even because we are at home, um, we need to think what to wear. And if you are in the, in the clothing industry, how can you deliver a better product for the new needs? 
And this was a very interesting case, Japan-based creative agency, uh, whatever, team up with the designer Akihiko uh, Kimura, and they released this called WF8 Jamis. So if, as you can see in the picture, it's a nice shirt on the top, but it's, 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 it's very relaxing, it's a very comfortable sweatshirt material at the bottom. So um, that's a very interesting thing. What will be the new fashion? So the strategies now is, um, so plan to how to unlock the capacity to scale and how to, to serve homes. How can you serve the whole experience at home? What is really needed? I, sometimes I think that entertainment has really been reduced. Um, we watch movies, uh, kids play games, and food definitely for me has been an example of what is entertaining. Play, well, we play games and things that, that we used to do, but definitely food. Food is, is being our entertainment. How can we bring the experience to the next level? So, so that's something for you to think. Uh, shift all delivery and marketing channels to focus on the home and the messaging around it. So how can really, how can we, how can we make it easier? If I have to look for uh, in a very complicated way, probably I won't order. And when you do a connect, make a connection, make sure you can accept all that information. I remember for Mother's Day, I received a message for the, the restaurant, a restaurant, a local restaurant that I like a lot. But when I tried to call, the line was so busy that I could never order. So make sure that you have the way to communicate, but also to receive, um, to, to receive um, the, the, to connect with the client back. Um, accelerate the digital transformation and e-commerce. E-commerce is coming. Uh, I think uh, it was coming even before. It's the stores that we're seeing that maybe are going to, on to chapter 11, either it's because either they're gonna be, they want, I'm doing this to get more lean, but if they disappear, it doesn't mean that the whole commerce is gonna disappear. We will still consume in a different way, maybe for a period, maybe we'll be more careful what we will consume. Um, some are in the survival mode, which is really difficult, but also there's people that are still consuming, but it's, it will be basically through e-commerce. And, and we need to re understand, rethink about our new commerce experience. Identify how your brand can promote your customer and their community. Definitely, um, the more we care about people at home and our community is a completely way to rethink about your business uh, and to connect really with your clients and communicate product service and service transparency. I think nowadays more than ever, we wanna see that whatever you are providing is clean, is sourced from the right place. So they will be very careful on that. Not only the, how you connect me and how you talk to me, but show me that you are the real deal. Finally, the reinvention of leadership. And it's coming definitely made us rethink what is leadership. COVID-19 has really shifted that. We need to think of purpose first. We need to think what is the purpose of our company. Some companies have what they call the big purpose. They're really changing the environment, the helping a specific areas of the population. Yeah, but we all our business have a purpose. It could be not a huge purpose, but if how to treat our employees, how to deliver a better service, how to make it easier, how to bring something better. Purpose is about transformation. How can I do it better and it will benefit someone? Definitely values is something that I said last week and I still believe it and is being reported. We, are, we should uh, leverage the values of our business and we will be measured by our values. So we need to be very careful. Use your values to convey whatever you are doing in your communication. Empathy. More than ever, we need to get in the shoes of others as companies. And um, we need to understand the, the new user and the pains and the gains they're having. And um, the best leader 
is the one that promotes collective behavior, that it can help people to act together in a positive way. So some examples, eh, which was very interesting, Thai Airways, um, uh, the Tha Thailand national carrier, rewarded with the Royal Orchid, imagine the American Airlines miles is the equivalent of that, the, their plus members with free miles for staying at home. So it was very interesting. They promote people to stay at home, but they're giving the miles. So when things are open, they will use the airline again. So it was, it was a really interesting case. These were two students that uh, decided of out of home campaign for Netflix. So whenever it was to encourage viewers to stay at home. So whenever people went outside, they will find this type of signs maybe in the public areas. So they will remember they needed to be at home. Um, so they created a lot of out of home. Um, so they will, re it will be, um, whenever you are outside, it will be a message to correct your behavior. And even companies is not about only COVID-19, but how is the new world we wanna build? And uh, Starbucks in China doing COVID-19 really strengthened the partnership with Omnipork, Oatly, and Beyond Beef to start producing vegan diary and meat alternatives. Um, so they're gonna create a, a plant-based menu. So even, even COVID-19 has made a stop in our life to make us rethink, the world has to continue and we need to think of our environment and a lot of changes that were coming anyway. Uh, so this is the game of Starbucks. The strategy here on the leadership is define your crisis purpose. Know what is your purpose on all of these. Um, define your operational metrics because probably the way you were measuring your objectives has changed and make sure you do it in a win-win situation because we, are, we all need to, to win. Everybody, you, your client, your providers, everybody. How can we make it a win-win-win-win? Um, run an ambassador or influencer program. Whoever you can do for others, make sure you, you, you communicate it and you share it in a way that you can influence others to continue doing well. Social responsibility will become central to all organizations. Doesn't matter the size, we will be checking how social responsible the, each company is. And better understand of the customers and employees behaviors. We need to drive better behaviors with be, um, motivate our customers for, and employees for better behaviors. Lead by example with better behaviors. The steps definitely um, listen, I sorry, I, um, I didn't change this picture, sorry, I, it was my mistake. I'll do it before I send the, the final um, presentation. I don't know what happened, but listen to your customer. Pivot in whatever you need to pivot. So correct whatever you need to correct. Learn from your customers and reinvent I show you already, if this is gonna be change, change. So you have to measure, measure, measure. But if you are not listening, you are not, you are not changing, and you are not testing with your clients, you will never be able to change. And now more than ever, I believe in what Walt Disney say, that if you can dream it, you can do it. Definitely, you, we need to dream. We need to dream in the world we wanna have. And that's the biggest trend. How, what is the world? We can even say that trend. What is the world we want? And there we will be able to do it. So I will open some questions. And if you need any help, as I said, we are at uh, the SBDC. I put the QR code for the webinar of last week in case you need it. So I'm gonna give you a couple of moments in case you wanna scan it and see the business reinvention kit if you miss it. And then in the next slide, I'm gonna show you all the phones and how to reach us at the SBDC. So we are here to help you. We are here to reinvent the business if that's what you need. Okay, Brian, okay. I'm open to questions or Brianna? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so we have a question from Marcelo. 
Um, they said that I see many information and strategies may work for some services and goods, um, but let's imagine a language school for international students in the U.S. Um, so that means students are coming from different countries to the U.S. in order to study English under an F-1 visa. Um, for immigration purposes, they have to study 18 hours per week. Um, if it was to study online, um, basically coming to the U.S. wouldn't have originally been necessary, so they would have stayed, stayed home, essentially. Um, that said, how do you see it? I mean, if students um, who came to the U.S. to study abroad are not able to go back to on-site classes, um, coming to the U.S. becomes unnecessary. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah. So is it going to be the end of ESL schools, which work with international students? So I'm not sure exactly at the beginning. I think you are a language school and you teach English to students. No, Brianna, that's... Yes, Okay. Um, for international students. This is my opinion. I think uh, the world has opened a big mar market for you. Uh, maybe it's not about the international students, but the rest of the world is in deep need of learning English. And this is the reason uh, when, you, when I talk, one of the biggest questions, especially when I give the, the, the presentation in Spanish, people ask me, where do I find webinars? Where do I find inform information in Spanish? I don't know English. And everything that is coming out is in English. People more than ever will need to learn English. People, really, you have a huge market if you manage to pivot to help people, business people around the world, students. People would like to learn whatever is happening, but they need to do it in English because that's the information that is coming faster. So that's an idea for you. Next, Brianna. Okay, and then we had another question. It said, could you please talk more about the first few slides with the curve that you had mentioned? Let me go back. So the, the, any industrial revolution, any change has that curve. It's not now, it's always. Um, so definitely whenever we are in, in um, oh, sorry, this is taking longer. Whenever there is a change, this curve will happen. That means that at the beginning, if nobody knows what is going on. Let's say when, when internet came, everybody was kind of lost, what was gonna happen. Then a lot of agencies start closing jobs and firing people. It reached to a point that agencies were pretty lost. They were really small. Clients were really disappointed what was going to happen. It was a total disruption. So they had to start hiring new people with new skills. And then they reinvented. And nowadays, marketing is the way we know it today with social media and a lot of um, Connect, connections in different ways. The same when Amazon came, we also Amazon and everybody was worried. It has cut the business of a lot of uh, stores um, and it's in a big disruption. But I think the retail industry is gonna now finally reshape where they need to be. If you think in the last two years, a lot of malls were really at the bottom. They were really lost. Now, at least before COVID-19, what they were replacing were the anchor, anchor stores for um, business that require a lot of manpower, um, like um, call centers. So they, they reimagine their business of malls and by having those anchors with business that require a lot of people, they could bring circulation of people to the rest of the shopping center. So, so those changes will come and have come forever. Um, the same with electricity that I said before. Electricity was invented 10 years before it was really started to be used because it really impacted the gas industry. And, and it was a big conflict how to apply it. When we look at the world, there are a lot of the examples that I gave you how some other countries are really advancing some things that we do. So, so that's the idea. 
okay? I hope it's clear. It's called the cobbler rolls change curve if you wanna look for it. Okay, and then I wanna call on Brian. I think Brian had a question. Brian, I think you're on mute. Yeah. Um, Adriana, thanks for a great presentation. I know that we can't get the applause from the audience. But, um, <laughs> Thank you, Brian and Brianna, both. Thank you so and, much. And I love how you um, cover kind of like a recommendation, and you also have a really good example afterwards. Um, I think you covered in terms of your presentation, you talked about kind of pivoting, and obviously it's ideal if you can have a new product or service. So if you can come out with a new product or service that kind of um, adjusts to the new normal, like folks that are pivoting to make face shields or folks that are pivoting to help, you know, hospitals and things like that or do contracting with hospitals. Obviously, you can um, focus on new channels, like new selling channels. You can mm -hmm. focus on new marketing. The one thing I wanted to ask you about was you talked about kind of like Zoom and help being at focus more on like um, serving home and uh, taking care of folks at home. Um, also, team building. Can you talk a little bit more about kind of like the virtual learning aspect um, social media and connectivity, because I think that's going to be the big part moving forward is how businesses can pivot for either virtual content, virtual connecting with clients, um, you know, con uh, basically connectivity with their teams. So can you talk about that in terms of business trends? Um, because I think that's mm -hmm. going to be the huge thing because everybody's used to Zoom now. Everybody's used to using those delivery apps um, or ordering from their um, you know, their local restaurant or retail and getting delivery at home. Can you talk about kind of a little bit more about businesses pivoting on that aspect and kind of some of the uh, best practices that you've seen? Yeah, I definitely think, as I said, the fourth industrial revolution is not about the technology per se, not about artificial intelligence, not about, I mean, that's what is driving the change, artificial intelligence, um, e-commerce, um, autonomous vehicles, blockchain, all of that is driving the change. But what is really impacting in us is the way we connect and we communicate. I think COVID-19 forced us to do a shift. Even the government is shifting to going virtual. Uh, we have found a way that we can communicate and stay connected in ways we never imagined before. So any business, so let's look at work. Let's, let's divide it into examples. Work, definitely we have found that is, if I don't have to drive, I have an extra hour to work, which is a plus. Mm -hmm. Maybe it gives me more time to think and work. What I find more difficult maybe is to connect to other people. So definitely we need to explore the other um, tools and, and um, apps and, and digital um, uh, platforms that could help us change to connect with them. The new trend is not talking about workplaces, but work uh, platforms. What they say is we're gonna, what is gonna keep us together as in work is about the platform, not the places. And if you think, once you think that way, even for instance, a restaurant, what it means is that you can have a place where people can come into the future but you can have a platform where people can buy and consume your product, even though they're not in your place. That will also change teams because that means that you will need teams that maybe are in the physical place, but teams that are in the platform and managing that platform to connect with your products and services. Yeah. And you're, so you're on the restaurant and you're talking about examples like kind of virtual, like ghost kitchens and kind of like kitchens that are deliver, you know, delivery focus. In fact, what I, I, a trend that I'm seeing big is that people are not, not all of restaurants are opening. They're only going to do curbside mm -hmm. for a while because, yeah, that's a trend. And I now could have a restaurant and not have a front restaurant. Yeah. I could have all type of services that before had a front that I, they don't need to have a front. Well, I have a good example on that. Um, everybody knows Chuck E. Cheese. You've taken your kids there. You've seen, you know, your family members take kids there. Um, they actually got a lot of social media backlash because in the midst of COVID-19, you know, they have pizza and they have um, other types of things like appetizers. They actually pivoted and they created a separate company called Pasquale's Pizza. And what it was, was they were basically uh, setting up a separate company to deliver Chuck E. Cheese pizza 
<laughs> to oh. uh, consumers. And a lot of people found out, because I guess Pasquale, they have like a band of like little puppet, uh, robot puppets. And the band, one of the people was named Pasquale. So they found it out and actually they had to acknowledge, you know, publicly that yes, we're, we're delivering Chuck E. Cheese pizza to people, but that was their way to kind of keep up and, um, you know, stay afloat. But they also pivoted really well because they said, we have high quality pizza and we're exploring other ways to provide services to our customers. And, um, you know, this is one way that we're going to do it. And we're going to offer new offerings and things that we don't offer in Chuck E. Cheese. So actually on the social media, there was a backlash and they actually handled it effectively and were able to get better marketing for this Pasquale's pizza. And I think most people wouldn't know it without the articles talking, you know, calling you out on that. But that's actually like a, a business that's a traditional bricks and mortar that actually shifted to delivery services. Yeah, actually- I also know a case in Colombia that is called Masa. It's mm-hmm. an amazing bakery and restaurant. They're famous for the bread and they decided to, people want now to make bread at home. So uh, they decided to sell the, all the ingredients dry so people can make their own bread at home. And now all the connection is through, through social media, how to make different type of breads with the bases that they sell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so I noticed Brianna, we had a couple more questions that came in. Yes, um, so one of them was, how do you think a pet sitting and dog walking company that is high touch can go virtual? No one is able. No one has been able to give her any advice on this yet. What I have ideas. seen with pets, because at the end, as much as it's like we maybe we stop going to the hairdresser, maybe we're not going every month, but we will have to go to the hairdresser at some point. Even pets, as much as we can, there's two ways that I think you can do with pets. What I have seen with pets is that people come in the car, they pick them up. They, uh, they take care of the pet and they deliver it to the car and there's contact pay, uh, payment. That's the cases that I have seen. Definitely you can have a system that you go, remember people want to stay at home, that you go in front of the house and you groom the pet. Uh, pet sitting, so if you are taking care of the pets for the long time, probably at this time exactly not a lot of people are doing pet sitting. Um, but I think once we go, we start moving even a little bit more local, they will, they will do it. And I think pets, they now got, I think pets were really happy with doing COVID-19. They have the families 24 seven. When we start moving a little bit more, pets will be desperate. Also, maybe you can use some social media to teach your clients how to deal better with the pets. Uh, it's like kids. Or maybe pets are desperate. Maybe I think they're happy. Maybe they're desperate having the family 24 seven. So, so it's, it's try to reimagine the new, what, what is needing with the pets right now. A good way to find out what is needed is call your clients and ask them, how can you help them? They will give you a lot of ideas. Believe me, we all have new ideas on how to do things. So that will be my advice. You can also call your clients and, and ask them. Um, that's what I suggest. Okay. And then our next question, how can we communicate what we do or the service we provide with the right audience? Uh, definitely there are many ways to now connect and communicate. Uh, I think the most important thing about communication is, is not only, is not the channel only, but the whole message. The best way to communicate is if you do um, day in a life. So think how your client behaves at what point during the day and when is he or she receptive to the message that you're gonna deliver and what is the type of message you want to deliver. So what exactly you wanna do to connect. Um, Think of the, uh, get in their shoes and uh, think there is many times that you receive a call that you don't wanna receive a call. So, think if you were your own client, when was the best time to connect, receive the information, what type of information you would like to hear. And again, even for communication, ask your clients, test a little bit. A client that you know very well, do a test. What do they think? How do they like? How do they perceive your message? This is the, a time that we need to do. That's why I say at the end, listen, pivot, 
then get feedback from your client and assess and change again. We will be doing that over and over again. Thank you. Do you have okay. any other? And then, and then our next question, I have added PPP, I'm sorry, PPE products to our Shopify and Amazon accounts. I'm not allowed to pay for ads due to COVID-19 precautions. All my ads get denied. I appeal the ad and they still get denied. How do you recommend I advertise these products? And by the by PPE, she meant the face shields, mm -hmm. um, different mask gowns, sanitizer, et cetera. Honestly, um, marketing is kind of saturated recently with good things and with not really good things. I think the best approach now, believe it or not, is more like public relations approach. You can write articles, for instance. Uh, you can comment on other information that somebody posts. Um, you can uh, create a chain with your friends, but it's a lot about more public relations. And, and public relations is how, um, by, by the way we content we produce, we, we relate to others. So people, for instance, right now are really starving for good information. So if your information is what the different types of PPE, people will be reading it because people want to know the, the thing and then they will probably find you. So be creative in the way we connect or communicate. Um, that will be my advice. Okay. And then I believe just our last like question is actually just a comment. Um, they were saying, I do believe that many with valid skills are thinking um, of opening a home-based business, but they um, do not have the whole set of skills. Um, so they are teaming up in a way to distribute um, in communities to present a more powerful front um, using distributed skills. I do believe there is a lack of advice about how to better such arrangements. So I think that was just a, kind of a comment. It's a good comment. I think the skills are shifting. Um, but remember, we have abilities and we have capabilities. Abilities in when we are good to doing something. Capabilities in when we are good, at, we have the ability to produce a result. Sometimes people with not the best abilities have amazing capabilities. That means that they manage to make it happen. So what we need really now to make sure is that we have the abilities, the good way to do, we know how to do the things well, but also that we have the capabilities that is the way to really make things happen. Um, so, so yes, you're right. A lot, of, a lot of new products will come out. Some will be good, some will be bad, but that's when leadership and values and, and, and the core is so fundamental because we will be choosing to we will become more picky in a way to select who we contact, who we buy, uh, who do I want to come and work in my house and all of that. But it's a good comment. Thank you. And that was the last of our questions. I, um, I, I'll go ahead and mention that uh, just like for all of our webinars, um, post webinar, I'll send out a thank you email. This will include the um, presentation for today as well as we will post this webinar to YouTube as soon as I um, get access to the file. Um, I'll upload it to our FIU Entrepreneurship YouTube page. Um, Brian, did you have any additional comments? No, oh, I thought it was a great presentation as always, um, great information. And um, I really love the questions um, that covered a variety of industries and best practice and things like that. So I don't, I don't have anything else. I think. Adriana covered everything, so it was a good job. Thank you very much. Please use the links on the presentation. Probably you'll find even more examples when you click. Um, so I hope this is useful for all of you. Thank you, Brian, again. And thank you, Brianna, for coordinating all these webinars.